Hey everybody, this is Hogan Brown with Loon Outdoors, and I am going to show you how to tie today my runoff stone. Okay, kind of a, a mix of a bunch of different patterns and a bunch of different things that basically is designed to serve as a point fly, a heavy stone fly pattern to get down in deep pocket water or heavy runoff flows. I fished under an indicator uh, during high water, um, but it'd be a great tight line or your own nymph kind of point fly as well for a big kind of buggy stone fly for those early season uh, days. So to start off, we're going to use a number six just straight shank jig hook and this is the biggest tungsten bead that I can find and with that since I want this to sink literally like a rock I'm going to add some 0.2 non-toxic lead to even weight this more and this is 0.2, but you could beef it up to 0.25 if you want. Because I do, even with the 0.2, build up a little bit of body. So After that, I'm going to just use some basic white thread. And I'm going to take that white thread down on that hook shank of hair because that's where we're going to put that hot spot on on the butt. One trick to getting those hot spots to kind of pop and then stay is putting them over white thread. Now it's not perfect, they don't stay on you know for multiple days of fishing but putting that hot spot over white thread is going to give it a little bit better chance. So, for this one, I'm going to use the UV Fly Finish in Hot Orange. It's one of my favorite colors to do hot spots with. And I do it in pieces to make sure that this whole thing, or in sections, to make sure this whole thing cures. So, it a little bit on one side, cure it, turn it over. Kind of match it up on the other side. And I used to do this with uh, dubbing, you know, give hot spots to the back of some of my off color water flies using uh, ice dub and various forms of, you know, flashy material, even using hot tails. Um, but this is just a quick, easy kind of cool way. I always give it a little squeeze to make sure make sure it's all cured in there. Give it a nice long cook. Because of the pigment in these resins, they will take a little longer to cure than your normal UV clear, fly finish clear stuff. Once to do that, I'm just going to take some standard brown thread. I use ADOT on all my flies. I, Especially my trout flies, I try to get away with the thinnest for thread I can just to minimize the uh, bulk of thread. Then for tails, again, the beauty of <coughs> really, I'd like to say any fly I tie, but a lot of my flies, is you can use any sorts of material uh, colors. You know, I prefer the standard kind of vinyl legs, but you can use your favorite rubber leg. These are just the same kind that you would use on like a Pat's rubber leg or something like that. Uh, and I just set them right on top. Use that kind of hot spot to split them. Hold them out. Trim them. And I'll trim up exact lengths and such when I'm done with the fly. The next thing I'm going to use is a material called Pearl Quill. It's kind of a rib that you can use. It's got this nice kind of pearl essence to it. 
and you can use wire too as well if you want to use wire you can use wire and crystal flash a um, lot of combinations you can use for a rib here but I've been using this it kind of kills two birds with one stone it's durable um, kind of gives it a nice segmentation and a little bit of flash. For the body of the fly, I'm just going to use a uh, kind of Antron Golden Stone Fly colored dub. This is um, an old bag of Paxton's dub, uh, Buggy Nymph. Um, one of my favorite dubbings. Hard to find anymore. Um, but twist that on there. I run it pretty tight. And like anything, if you're, if you're looking for like a, a kind of similar fly, I'm going to kind of taper this as I would, say, a giant bird's nest. And you can also tie this in, uh, you know, standard bird's nest colors if you want. Um, I tend to like the golden kind of brownish, but uh, definitely that more hare's ear, bird's nesty color will work just fine. And actually look really good if you're looking for other color combinations, like a hot pink spot um, on that color combo versus the orange on this. And one thing about this great about this dubbing is it can be used to pack down tight where we're going to see later in the fly, you're going to see how you can get a really nice kind of buggy look to it as well so at that point and you can bulk it up I kind of like a nice little taper to that then I'll take the pearl quill and just wrap it around and it gives that kind of purpley brown iridescence in that fly and that segmentation and this is going to pop out through all the collar materials that we're going to put on this fly Go. Mm -hmm. okay. Trim that off. Then for proportion wise, I kind of use the same proportions I would for a bird's nest. So if you notice, I leave a nice area for a head there because I'm going to put a, a few materials here on the collar. And the next material I'm going to put here is going to be a CDC soft tackle. So basically I'm going to take one of the big loose CDC feathers. This is just natural done. So I take one of the bigger ones and I'm just going to soft give it a soft tackle out of this. Just take that tip, pull it back and tie it in right there. Trim off the end. Now, ideally, you're going to take the natural curve of those fibers and as you palmer it, have them kind of cup around the fly. But like most things I do with CDC, it, it rarely is in any organized, articulate way. It usually kind of gets wrapped around or put on and then made to look clean with thread wraps and somewhat adjustments. CDC is one of those materials that I don't think goes in the same way twice. So cut that stem off. Then basically I just take this, kind of move it around and use that thread to just pin it back. Again, all this is really doing for me is just going to provide that kind of pulse and movement as this thing drifts. Next thing, I'm going to take some mallard flank in the um, wood duck gold color to kind of match that dubbing. You can use different colors if you want it to kind of pop out or stand out against that dubbing. Um, but 
I'm going to use the kind of gold wood duck. Just take a clump about like that. And again, this is the same kind of proportions as, say, a giant bird's nest. Because this is definitely a variation of that. Kind of tie those. I like them a little shorter than the CDC. Take another clump, tie it on to the other side. Just split them just like that. There we go. And then with this one, to kind of finish up this fly on the head, I'm going to take some of the loose dubbing. And I take it and just kind of set it on that thread and loosely wrap it. Okay, and it naturally comes out this way. So I give it a few wraps and then pull that back and pin it down. Okay, and this is exactly how I would do this with a much smaller bird's nest. Okay, just give it that kind of buggy collar. Pull it forward, and I kind of pick it out. Give it a little bit. Look at it, make sure it's looking right. Okay. Good. And then at that point, give it a few solid thread wraps. Then I'm going to take another strand of that vinyl leg. I'm going to set one on this side. Like that. Just split it, then take one, on this side, split that, then give it a few wraps right in the middle. Tie it off. I'm going to take these. That's about the length I like. I like it a little bit past the hot spot. Trim that. Then I like these in the front. A little shorter. Okay. Kind of see the length. But again, it's to kind of to each their own. However you prefer. You can even them out. Then I'll take some UV Fly Clear Thin, give it a little spot there. And then this is a little addition that I like to do. I like to give it a little hot underbelly. Okay. Give it a nice little dot of that hot orange. Fly finish right on the bottom. Again, make sure that cooks nice. And kind of pick it out, and there you go. Ready to dredge up a few uh, fish this spring during runoff. Again, Hogan with Loon Outdoors. That's Hogan's uh, runoff stone. Tight lines. <laughs>